Hello, once again YouTube and welcome to a, a video. <laughs> it's almost New Year's Day. New Year's Eve even. Um, yes, today I'm doing a special review because I got notes on me. Fucking notes. Uh, yes, a top 10 best songs of 2020. Now I'm going to do, uh, this is technically not a top 10, this is a top, uh, whatever I feel like putting. So I'm going to mention all the songs that I, I'm going to mention all the songs that I couldn't have, like, added into the list that I think are worthy of being in the list, okay? So... We're all good. We're all good. That cool, cool. Okay, so these are just basically honourable mentions. First thing, "Dead to the World" by uh, Noel Gallagher's "High Flying Birds." The really good song, R really good production, fantastic poetry, basically by Noel, and absolutely superb, like simple chord progression. I love the chord progression to death. It's so good. Uh, and then we'll also have This Is Why by Paramore. You Paramore fans. Yeah, you, you guys are cool. I like you. I like you a lot, but just chill for once. Uh, yeah, I really liked it. It sounded like Radiohead, basically, so I mean, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, and a shout out to all my mates who have released music in the past year, uh, Rest in Bitch Face, I think they released music in the past year, I'm not too sure, possibly, yeah, with their song, uh, B-Y-O-B, which is not a cover of the Bloomin', um, uh, oh god. Oh, it's gonna. Oh, uh, System of a Down song. Yeah, System of a Down. There we go. But that one's a good song. Uh, Satan's uh, Daughter by Unclaimed J, who's also a part of Wrestling Bitch Face. That's good. In the Eden and Between. The no, I'm going to go with Secrets by Vanitas. That's also a good one. Uh, you should check them out as well. And, of course, the best song out of them all. The best song of all time. Greatest song of all time. Uh, Ultraviolence by uh, Snowblind. Yeah. You should maybe check out the song. Listen to it a little bit more. Oh, it's on everything, basically. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, okay, anyway, that's, that's all my honourable mentions, uh, there, so, uh, this, this, this list is sort of random, sort of in order, it's from, like, like, good to excellent, okay, good to excellent, I got notes as well, I got notes, yeah, yeah, notes, alright, first up, we got Lux Antenna by Metallica. Now, the newest album was fucking shit, but this song actually kicks major ass. I feel like this is a very, like, cool, very good callback to their fresh roots, you know. Uh, you know, Lars is actually playing in time and playing, like, good, you know. Uh, I think his drum kit sounds as good as ever, you know. it. Doesn't sound as ear piercingly bad. Not much compression. Uh, the riff is killer and catchy, and I do find myself humming it at, like, sometimes, you know? And I, I quite like James's vocal performance on this. It, it just goes hard, you know? This song just goes hard. Uh, and it's a real, it's a real, like, it feels like it's always existed, you know? It feels part of the f furniture of the Metallica mythology, you know? And I, and I think, like, I think 
it just it just goes hard, you know. <laughs> okay, next up, there goes my call by Royal Blood. It's an it's very different from what they usually do, and I think that's good because they got stale after a while. They're sort of like gimmick of them being two like musicians kind of wore off, and with the latest album, they've been incorporating other instruments out of bass and drums they don't just have the rhythm section they also have guitars and pianos and i think this song is a perfect like beatles-esque style song i i think mike kern gives his best mccartney impersonation it's such a crisp and clear delivery with such a delicacy that you don't you don't really hear from Royal Blood. Usually they sound a little bit more aggressive, like sort of like the Black Keys, you know, like sort of bluesy. But this feels very much 60s British Invasion, which you could say is also bluesy, but it's also got a bit of like, I don't know, it's that sort of flavour, that Beatles flavour, you know, that you just know it when you hear it, you know, at I love the piano playing. The chord progression is absolutely lovely as well. It's it's relaxing in it, and it takes you into its world. I think the and also the lyrics are pretty depressing. I think it sounds like a song like Alone Again, Naturally, you know, or uh, Penny Lane or something like that. If it, it it really does feel of the sixties and seventies, like, and I've noticed that this year there's a lot more like old bands coming back and also people using old sounds like wet leg and like uh pacifica and like uh blooming i mean it's 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 great you know it's great um oh yeah wet leg did they release a album this year if they did i'd probably add that to this uh, like i think a wet dream or something like that. I can't remember what is it called. Oh, uh, it escapes my memory. But anyway, that that's on the honourable mentions. Uh, pretend I put that on the honourable mentions. So, if you will. Anyway, the best is yet to come. Miles Kane. It's Miles Kane being Miles Kane. His usual Miles Kaney thing. The whole entire album is actually pretty good. It's called One Man Band, and you should definitely check it out. But I think he's got such a aggressive voice, but also a, such a high voice as well. It's it's not at the growly bit, but I blimmin' love his eccentric guitar leads. He, it's just all of, it's. It's 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 interesting. It's not the boring generic blues licks that we we've all grown sick and tired of. It's something different. And in the blues, like indie rock genre, it uses a lot of like chromaticisms and yeah, you know, it's 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 adventurous guitar playing, and I and I think it really complements the overall song and it really gets you hyped up it's a real stadium like energy song yeah so as you can tell i am really digging all these you see none of these songs are bad most of these are really good that's why they're on the top 10 list and even the honorable mentions they're really good as well it's just i didn't have enough space for it you know um but yes uh Countdown to Shut Down, another energetic anthem song. This one grabbed me when I first heard it, and I couldn't get enough of it. I was listening to it daily, you know what I mean? And I just love the fact that the vocal, the whole band is playing together with the da 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 The bass, I love it when it goes, like, really gainy sort of like distorted you know crunchy sound you know and like the like the interplay between the bass and the guitars is just so badass you know it's so simple as well such a raw raucous effective punky sort of like anthem you know and 
it just, it just, you can't get enough of it. It's just fuel, fuel with energy, and the music video is even great as well. I, and also the shouty sort of like childlike vocals, and like just like it's such a natural badassity from the hives, you know. And plus their uniform looks cool. Anyway, yes, yes, that's number seven. Number six, we're gonna take it down a notch with the sweet sounds of heaven by the Rolling Stones, feet Lady Gaga, and Stevie Wonder. Yes, yeah, Stevie Wonder's on this track. Did you know that? Um, this is the Stones being the Stones. This is this is the. It's a six-minute track. Most six-minute tracks are great, you know. And I feel like it's. It's just, it's just a song that you can relax to. The licks are tasteful. They're not flashy, but they are very much engaging. They make, the the stones make bluesy licks like absolutely great, and I have a theory it's about dying basically. That's how I get it. It's gospel, you know. And Lady Gaga has a bit of the magic sauce on it. I was considering angry, but I think Lady Gaga's performance on this, and also Mick's performance, you know, Mick is on par with. A modern female singer. They're play. They're singing in the same register, guys. This is unfucking believable. And I think this is what Lady Gaga should have been doing from the get go. She, she's a phenomenal singer, and she fits gospel blue rhythm and blues very well. And I love the build up. It's all the same. It's the same chord progression. Well, except for a middle eight, I believe, but. They use dynamics perfectly, and the band gets a little bit more intense, and then also dies down and brings it up a bit. And you know, it's like a roller coaster of emotions. It's such a wonderful song, and that's why it's on number six. Unfortunately, I don't own the vinyl. I wish I had Hackney Diamonds, but it was like thirty-six quid or something ridiculous like that. Anyway. Now, this is one you might have not seen coming. Little Yachty, the Black Seminole. Yes. I only picked this one because it sounded like Pink Floyd. <laughs> Just kidding. I think the lyrics, I'm not, uh, I don't listen to rap often, but I think the lyrics are pretty decent. But the instrumental, oh, that's where the killer is. Oh, the instrumental is so cool. The guitar riffs. It sounds like Dogs. And Dogs is one of my favourite Pink Floyd songs of all time. And, yeah, to replicate it, I, I, it, it's not, it's the same, but a little bit different. It's got that rap flavour. And it's, that, that's, you know, rock and rap shouldn't be mutually, should be, should be, kind of cross over more often like this and I feel like it it works you know it's like having vanilla with like I don't know no not vanilla having chocolate with uh salted caramel they're two things that don't go together often but when they go together they taste fucking great especially salted caramel bits with like chocolate ice cream uh yeah that, that that's the best uh anyway i i tangent about um uh, blooming ice cream over um yeah it really does feel like you're floating in space and and i love the keyboard flourishes yeah little yachty it, his vocal performance is also really great as well i i feel like he does very good with his rapping it's been a while since I listened to this song. <laughs> Can you tell? I'm running out of things to say. Anyway, we'll move on to St. Charles Square by Blur. This is the most David Bowie Blur song ever, and I'm all for it. It sounds like Scary Monsters, and Scary Monsters is my favourite Bowie album. So, yeah, another song sounding like another song. I, I mean, but it's also... The most blur song from the latest album as well. It's 
it's got that sort of like lazy but not lazy energy. The guitars sound wacky and just sound absolutely disgusting and atrocious, but also in a good way. You know, <laughs> I love Graham Coxon's like use of pedals. I swear down, and and then same with like. Damon's vocals. The bass, the bass and the drums are locked in tight. Dave and Alex are just together. They are just stuck in the pocket together. You know, they got it tight, and they're keeping the they're keeping the wandering and the craziness of the guitars and the vocals together. And like, it's such a punk. Like vocal performance as well, you know, the, you know, I th this year has been a pretty good year for like punk, like stuff, you know. Even Daft Punk had a uh, an anniversary this year, and they did do a song which also is an honourable mention. Uh, Infinite repeating or something. I I think it's called Infinite Repeating. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's the first Void song, by the way, as well. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a very good song. You should also check that out. Yeah, I, I think it's a very good, like, Blur song. It's up there with, like, at least Blimmin' uh, Country House. Maybe even Girls and Boys. Or To The End. Some of the early stuff, even, like Blimmin' um, uh, there's no other way. Yeah, I, th I think it's up there with that song as well. Yeah. Anyway, so next song. Next song. Oh, this is going fast, isn't it? Uh, Emotional Sickness by Queens of the Stone Age. In time, I could put the whole entire In Times New, New Roman song album on to this list, but I will not. And I, this one's the song that I listen to the most out of all of the songs on there. I, I just think, like, memorable licks, memorable riffs, tight ass, like, drumming and bass playing and everything's just, it feels like misshapen like distorted stuff but in a very beautiful and cohesive way you know the the guitar tone is absolutely yummy delicious you know uh josh homie has made his final transformation into david bowie on this album as well he just uses cool you know josh is like david bowie like Elvis, but a, like a little bit more darker, edgy Elvis, and uh, and they're doing what they usually do. It's such a great song, you know, and it's on number three. Like seriously, it's that good. Okay, number two, under you, well, by the Foo Fighters, yeah. This is where we have to talk about the fact that Dave Grohl has had a very bad had a very bad 2022. He lost his best friend in the form of Taylor Hawkins and his mother in the form of um Virginia Hawk uh not Hawkins uh Grohl. That takes a toll on a person and you would and we thought he was going to quit music, but like, he has been through tragedy a lot and he has managed to create one of the Foo Fighters' best albums for it. Honestly, I'm surprised. Okay, so Under You is an absolutely bittersweet return to form. I'm going to have to say Dave Grohl has outdone himself once more. This is the best Foo Fighters album since Wasting Light. Wasting Light was a superb album in its own right, but I think this is... Well, I don't know if it's better than it, but it's definitely on par with Wasting Light. Um, Yeah, I love the 
harmony vocals. The the double tracked harmony vocals are just absolutely gorgeous on this song. The melody, which is like uh, copied by the guitar, I think the guitars are phenomenal. They it, they really capture the feel, the emotion of the song. Pat and Shifty have done a great job. Like, they don't go overboard. They don't go adventurous. But they work to the strengths of the song and complement the vocal, Grohl's vocals. And it's a very bittersweet melody, you know? It makes you feel emotions, you know? Sad emotions. Uh, you feel sad, basically. Uh, and, yeah, he manages to communicate how it feels, and by he I mean grow, how it feels to lose a loved one. A, a feeling we all know, whether it be a pet, whether it be a family member, whether it be a friend, whether it be a bandmate, we've all experienced loss in our lives and it's heartbreaking, it's tragic, it's absolutely awful to go through. You miss them every yeah, it's like that he 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 sometimes you think they're there only to find out they're not. And and you act like they're there and you try and look for them and you can't you you just can't you, you you you're in denial you're in the denial stage of grief it's so haunting another Beatles-esque melody as well it's so fragile so the vocals are so fragile but so like honest and pure and flooding with like sadness and melancholy you know it's just i can't communicate in words how much i love this song that's the thing this song is just a masterpiece now some people may say it's mixed poorly but uh, i can't really hear it when i first heard it i thought it was pretty good but maybe that's because i have custom settings so yeah on for number one. Now and Then by the Beatles. What can I say? Of course it was going to be Now and Then. You should know me by now. <laughs> one of the biggest miracles of our century is Paul McCartney gets to do a tribute wrap off his, like, morning of John Lennon with this final song to their leg to add to the Beatles' legacy. This final, like, heartfelt tribute to John Lennon and George Harrison. And let me tell you, I've already recorded all my thoughts. I haven't released it, but I'm going to, in summary, I think, Beautiful chord progression, absolutely stunning work, what they've done with the learning algorithm to de to get rid of all the hiss and the hum from the original recording of Lennon's vocal. And it just sounds so beautiful, like he's in the same room as you. And I think that all the changes they did to the song were warranted. And I think it's just magical the slide solo actually makes me emotional the chords chord progression how the melody works with the chord progression what notes it adds you know it adds this it actually was one of the few songs that made me cry and you know that's a good thing showing emotion Sometimes we don't have enough time for emotions, you know, so I feel like uh, it it really let me 
let me feel comfortable with my emotions. But there's also a bit of uplifting. But the uplifting is also sad. <laughs> like, seriously, this is one of the saddest songs ever released. And the ending, the, the many references to other Beatles songs using, like, the ending bit really reminds me of Eleanor Rigby with the with the really sharp violins and then you also got the reference to wait at the end because it's also the same style of ending then also using songs like because and Eleanor Rigby as like vocals backing vocals on the song George Harrison doing the tasteful guitar licks. He did that in an afternoon, guys. George Harrison is just good. Really good. Paul McCartney doing a lovely slide solo to tribute to Blimmin' George. Of course, it's not as flashy as George, but... Paul isn't George Harrison, he's Paul McCartney. He's just being, he's just communicating the sadness of the song. And it is beautiful, especially, especially how the chords go, like, sound almost, you have, like, the major, the D major, but then it comes back down with the D minor, and then it goes into the... Into the verses, and you know it's it's that uh, it's that sort of like songwriting craft that I really like. The Beatles, the drumming, of course, fantastic, on point, sharp, absolutely crystal clear. Like good, Ringo doesn't do a bad, hasn't done a bad drumming performance in his whole entire life. He's just the drummer's drummer, you know, and. Paul, old Paul, singing backing vocals for, with John. And whenever John fluffs a line in the original demo, Paul corrects the line by singing what was supposed to be there, or what we think, what he thinks should be there. And yeah, you know, it, it, it does feel like, a touching farewell to John Lennon and George Harrison. And that's why it's number one. And yeah, Giles Martin did lovely orchestral like embellishments to the song as well. Kind of like his father. So yeah, everybody is represented in this song. It's, it is, it is a great song. It's, a beautiful masterpiece. I can't think of many flaws. Any. If any. So yes. That's been. My top ten list. Of. The greatest songs of. 2023. I've been Robert Lewis. I'll see you for my. End of year message. On. Uh, the 31st. So. Good. Bye.